太空探索永无止境。There is no end to unveil the mysterious of space. Hello, class. My name is Chen Dong, commander of Shenzhou 14. We are very happy in our 21 live module to continue our journey to unveiling the universe. Hello to you. My name is Liu Yang. Looking forward to today's lecture. Hello. I'm Cai Xuzhe, and during today's class, I'll be the cameraman. So follow my camera to enjoy the beauty of the space. And this is our third class. So I believe that you waited for a very long time. So finally, today we change a classroom. Continue our journey. So before we start our class, Liu Yang and I will first give you a little bit tour about our new classroom. And by the way, this is our Wen Tian Life module. Let's check this out. Wen Tian Live Module. This is our very first live module. It has the a complete the a live supporting system and also the a facilities we need every day. And this is our living and sleeping module. And this also provide additional beds for the astronauts and technonauts coming to the space. So inside Wen Tian module, so our sleeping quarters direction actually different from core module. So it's in horizontal in the core module, but here is in vertical direction. And of course, you cannot sleep in this direction on Earth. But right now, we are in a macro gravity. So any direction will feel the same. So by the design purpose, we can to arrange different direction our sleeping banks. So let's moving forward. I'm floating to this living area. So here you can find our kitchen. So you can see the living microwave and the a drinking tablet, and also similar as we have in the core module. And on the other side, this is what we move from core module, and this is our cycle, our back here. In front of our special designed back, that's the a hiding place. So so far you could understand that the a live module actually can provide the a live support systems for the technonauts and also equipped with complete control management system. And if the core module actually encounters some emergency, then uh, the a Wen Tian live module can serve as the full backup to the space station's key systems. So, so far we know that there is sleeping quarters, and living areas, kitchens, and now coming to the key part of the live module, that's the work space. So you know that we have that the cabinet, and also in the previous lecture, we introduced some of the a cabins, cabinets to our students, and also look at what we have this time. We actually have some new ones on board the a Wen Tian Lab module. We have a glove boxes at the top. So later on, we will select samples of plants. So these glove boxes provide a very clean and sealed place so we can make sure that our experiment can be controlled and also in a very simple manner. So later on, we'll also have a very the, a tiny robotic arm to help us to assist 
the experiments and also later on we can also do the precise the ex operation so that help us to conduct the operation on the cell level and at the bottom that is a refrigerators with temperature as low as minus 80 degrees celsius and this also help to store samples so we can also change the temperature to minus 2 degrees and to minus 40 degrees as well. And here, this is our life science and ecology experiment cabinet. And this is a platform to conduct the experiment on single objects. You could see that divided into different units or in different rooms. Different rooms actually specialize for different objects. It's kind of like a hotel room for different animals and the plant. The, the results we got here that can actually provide the, a foundation for us to stay a longer time period in space, even in Mars. So think about that. Later on, we will also look at the uh, Arab doses. So which room stays? Please stay tuned. And look at this black box. And this is the a radiator meters to help us to measure the radiation level. So help us to put a close eye on the a radiation level in the cabin. Now we move to another cabinet. So for this one, it's actually the uh, experiment cabinet for the biotechnology. It will focus on the uh, protein analysis and also the cells and tissue analysis. We have many equipments inside of this cabinet. So this is also a mini lab in the space. So earlier, Ye Guangfu have gave us some introduction about the cell studies. So for this cabinet, it will help us to learn more about the microorganisms. On my right hand side, it is the um, variable gravity experiment cabinet. So this will provide uh, different levels of the gravity. Let's take a look at this cabinet. So inside of the cabinet, we have two round discs. These are the turners, and for each one of them, they are equipped with different units. So we could use all of these units separately or use it all together. So for this one, we are talking about um, the centrifugal force. So we are able to provide the gravity environment. By using these experimental gravities, we are able to provide different kinds of experiments related to the biotechnology, gravity effects, and also the fluid items. So this is the introduction. Any questions? Any questions? Good afternoon. I'm from the Affiliated Middle School from the Chinese Academy of Science. So right now we're able to see different kinds of experimental cabinets in the space. I was quite impressed. So I'm quite interested about the microgravity fluid cabinet. So my question is why we want to do a lot of experiments about the fluid studies. Thank you. Thank you for your question. So for fluid, it is very essential in our daily life. It is the same for the construction for the China's space station. For the space station, you could see we are having this microgravity environment. So in such an environment, the movement of the fluid is quite different as of the ground. Water is a very common scene fluid, and in the past two lectures, we are able to show you some of the magical movement of the water 
And also we are using some of the fluid field for the carrier rocket in the microgravity environment, the movement of the fluid is quite different here. So if we use the fluid the same way as we did on the Earth, this must create a lot of problems. Now I would like to show you another experiment so that you could better understand the difference. So this is the container. We are pu I am putting some of the uh, pigment. So now I'm using different kinds, different shape of the tubes. And now I would like to put the tube inside of the container. Shall we be the same? So before I do this experiment, please try it. Let's see what happened on Earth. All right, now I'm able to see some of the results. Now you could see um, the water is rising, the liquid is flowing. Now it's my turn. Pay attention to this experiment. So just look at this one. It rises very fast. It rises to the top. So for the other two tubes, now you could see the water rises very slowly. Actually, in the space, without the impact of the gravity, now you could see we have a stronger surface tension. And this will drive the liquid flowing upwards. So in the end, for all of the liquid, they will float to the top of the tube. This is also because of the impact of the surface tension. Now for this one, you could see it is quite wider, but um, the liquid is able to reach to the top. So this experiment seems very simple, but there are many principles behind it. So for the scientists, they have to learn more and also they have to learn these principles to resolve some of the problems. For example, for some of the uh, combustion system and also the power system for the aircraft, we have to use this kind of the capillary phenomenon. And for some of the liquids, if they um, vibrate fiercely, this will actually have some danger for the engine of the aircraft. Now I would like to show you another experiment to see how we mitigate the vibration. So this is the water ball we have made earlier. So let's see the vibration of the liquid and the liquid-solid mixture under the same impact in microgravity environment. So first, I would like to push in some of the air. Just take a look. We do see a very fierce vibration. But how to mitigate the impact of the vibration? Now I would like to put a hollow iron ball inside of, what, of the water ball. Let's see what happened. For the steel ball, it enters into the water ball, but it feels like uh, for this water ball, it could pull back the steel ball. Now I would like to do it again to push in some of the air. Now you could see we are able to mitigate the vibration. It feels like the water ball is getting lazy. Now I would like to do it again.
So for this experiment, when we're adding the steel ball, it actually changed the movement of the vibration of the liquid. Just think about it. Why this happens? Can we use this principle for some of the application in our daily life? Now I'm actually getting a little bit of thirsty. Now I would like to show you how I drink water in space. In Earth, we use quite short uh, straw to drink the water. But if you have very long straw, it takes you some efforts to get the water. But today I would like to use a 2 meter long straw to drink the water. Have a guess. Let's see if I can drink the water successfully. Yes, I got it. It's a very easy task for me is mango juice. On Earth, because of gravity, we use a straw to drink water. So you need to spend a lot of efforts if you zip through a long straw. But here, the gravity is gone, so just by a very easy effort, I can use this crazy long straw to drink the juice. So here I am here. So besides the previous two experiments that stick capillarity in space and vibration of liquid and liquid solid mixture in space. Here we come to another experiment. So this is a T-handle, let's say we use it a lot in space. Let's see when we spin it, let's spin the smaller one. So look at this, right? It's tumble and over and. So you could see that it spin around and flip back and forth. So let's try another one. So look at this color and. So you could see that sometimes you could see that the right dots look it closely. You could see sometimes on the left, they then that turn to the right and then back to the left side. See that? So let's try these two together to see the similarity and differences. All right, you could see that they have a different gesture of rotation, right? But they are very naughty ones. So we look at that's a tumbling T handle, but think about this. What's the reason behind? Why T handle is dancing and also flowing and over and? So let's see if we rotate this direction, it's very stable, right? It's not really tumble and over and. Let's turn this way. Can you see this? So right now it's flip back and forth. So this is called the a Johnny Beckhoff effect. So it's named after a Russian astronaut. So this is what we see not because of the a distribution of mass and also the a rotation axis. So this is very hard to achieve on ground, but it's just a normal phenomenon we see in space. It's not finished yet, let me show you another one. So for this object, if we rotate it, think about this. And this is your homework, and you can tag the answer after the lecture.
，同学们，空间站为我们提供了长期微重力环境。So the host space station provides the a macrogravity environment, and we can observe something different from the Earth. So it also can help us to understand the scientific law and the rules. So besides all these very interesting phenomena. We also work together with experts and scientists to understand the reason behind. So back to Shenzhou 11, actually, you actually plant the a cabbage in Tiangong too. So yes, we actually plant the seed and also to have the close eye on its growth development. And also coming to the harvest. So not long ago, we also enjoyed a cabbage plant by Mr. Tai Xu Zhe. So that's the lettuce. It's very tasty lettuce, and we actually enjoy that during the a middle middle autumn festival. And what else we have here? We have rice. It's looking very nice. So talking about plants. So to plant, how you still can remember that not long ago we plant and grow the seed of herbidosis. Let's check what we got here. So before we check our homework in space, let me check your homework on Earth. So maybe I call out students in Yunnan. So anyone can answer the question that given by her Taiku Nut. Hello. My name is Mei Ziyan from the Dali New Century Middle School, Grade Six. So we actually had the a comparative studies of the a arbidopsis, and we record every day. So let me report to you what we got here so far. So three days after growing, that's the control group and the a scientific group. That's the we could see that the seedling, the very tiny small ones, but after ten days, you could see that the scientific group first grow the four leaves. It's faster than. The control group, and also on the third of the October, and we actually see the very small white flower. But actually, the arabidopsis in the control group has not really seen the flower yet. So we could see that the a what we got in the scientific experiment group that's the a early flowering. Herbidosis. So that's very interesting, and we hope to understand the whole seed to seed growth of Herbidosis. Very nice. Well done. So you could be a scientist later on in the future. I'm very glad to also tell you that the Herbidosis here in space is also looking good, and you could see this. Pictures, and this is what we recorded early on, and also today we also together to take some samples of the herbidopsis, and we put in the deep glove boxes, and later on we will store samples and will be brought back to Earth for further analysis. So let me put the glasses on. So you could see this is the a very first MR glasses. So with the glasses, I can finish the sample collection in a very safe and efficient way. So you could see that right now I provide you with this angle. So this you could see that we have this the 
FPV. And you could see you know, here, you could see six holes. And number three and number four, uh, the Arby Dopes, so we could see that already flooring, but here, number one, two, not coming to the flooring stage yet. And also could see the other Arby Dopes, also in a very small size. So first, let me take a photo, take a picture. Take a picture and send the picture. Display the screen. Display the guide. Alright, all the toolkits are ready. Hide the screen. Now I'm able to pick some of these aerobidosis. First, I would like to open the cover. Use a scissors. I will start from this one. Put the cover back. So alright, this is one of the sample of the aerobidosis. So after the class, I will continue to pick the samples and also I will put it into the low temperature storage box. So after I get all the samples, I will put it into the storage cabin with minus Celsius 80 degree and then I will bring all of the samples to the scientists on the ground. Talking about the aerobidosis, actually I have a story to share with you. In Tiangong 2, actually it is me who bring all of these samples back to the Earth. Hopefully this time we're able to see more research results. Dear students, so in this cabinet of the life ecology, also, we are raising and breathing another type of plant, which is the rice. Now I would like to show you where all the rice. Just take a look. With over 70 days of breathing, now you can see uh, for all of these seeds, they are turning into plants. One of the objectives for the breeding is that we want to uh, seed a seed-to-seed -seed life cycle of the rice. In this box, now you can see two types of rice, the growing rice and the dwarf rice. During the raising of the rice, we may see something different. Right at the beginning, we are able to see some of the water drops on the leaves 
of the rice. And also for these droplets, they will get bigger and then they will stick to the box. So actually, this is what we call degradation. In the microgravity environment, we are able to see this kind of phenomenon. Now you could see so many droplets of the water on the wall of this box. So I want to ask you questions. So when you are raising the rice, are you able to see this phenomenon of gutation? Why you don't see so many water droplets, but in the space station, we could see this phenomenon? This is your homework. So in August, we start to raise the rice and the wheat, and in October, we're able to see the harvest. We're expecting that in the future, we're able to get more crops in the space station. I hope in the near future, in the moon and in Mars, we're able to grow more crops. But this is your mission in the future. For all of these samples, they are treasures for the space station, and also this is because of the efforts for all the taikonauts. And today we are able to see a lot of harvest of the crops, and at the same time, I believe uh, you are able to learn a lot of knowledge. So that is the lecture part. Now it's the Q&A session. Feel free to ask the questions. I believe all of you have a lot of questions to ask. So first, I would like to give the floor to um, the classroom in Beijing. Any questions? The girl on the third row. Good afternoon. I'm from Renda Affiliated Middle School. You just talked about that for the uh, experiment cabinet for ecology is actually the hotel for the plants. So what are some of the plants coming to this hotel in the future? Thank you for your question. I would like to take your question. When I carry my mission in Shenzhou 11, I'm able to raise wool, silk wool. They are quite lovely, and right now in the space station, it is more advanced and developed. And this time, we're able to grow the aerobic doses and the rice, and uh, in the future, we are able to grow the zebra fish. And I believe um, they will adapt to this environment. And also we're able to monitor the temperature and humidity in all of these boxes. And we are able to take photos and also to make some videos of all of these uh, creatures. So that for people from the Earth, they understand the conditions for these plants. That must be very interesting. Thank you. Now I would like to invite students from Shandong to ask the question. Now is the Q&A session. Please raise your question. Good afternoon. I'm from Hezhe Number One Middle School, Siyushan. I want to ask you a question. In the space, we don't have direction. We cannot feel the gravity. But why the roots of the arabidosis and the rice could still settle in the space? Maybe I will take the question. First of all, thank you for your question. Very interesting indeed. In the space station, even though we don't have any gravity, however, for the root, they could grow inside of the soil. 
This because for all of these plants, they grow towards gravity and moisture. So in the soil, it is full of moisture and the water. So that's why during the germination period, for the seed of the rice and the arabidosis, they will grow towards the gravity. So for the stem and also the root, maybe they will not grow in the same direction. All right. Any more questions from Shandong? We still have the opportunity to ask the question. Good afternoon. I'm from Hezhe Number One Middle School in Zhenghan. My question is that for the life cycle of the plant in space, is this any difference as compared to the Earth? I believe when you are growing the arabidosis, you may come up with this question. Maybe Mr. Tsai can answer your question. This is a very interesting question. In the space, we are in the microgravity environment. It may have a lot of impact for the development and the growing of the plants. For the scientists, they have done a lot of experiments. So under microgravity environment, it will affect the life cycle of the plants. For example, Chen Dong has just mentioned that for some of the um, plants, they may be late. And for other kind of plants, they may grow slowly inside of the space cabinet. However, they tend to live longer. This is also quite interesting to observe. Now let's turn over to Henan province to see if the students have any questions. So any questions, please raise your hand. Hello to all the Taikonauts. My name is Mao Yuanyuan. My question is, uh, to grow plants, can the plants receive enough sh the a sunlight? That's the a light provided by the lights inside the cabinet or the natural light? So this question reminds me that we also not enjoyed the sunshine for quite a long time. I invite Miss Liu to answer your question. All right, I believe this is the question a lot of students may also have. So you could see that a lot of the plants are actually in the a cabinet, right? So they cannot enjoy the natural sunlight. But here we have the ambient light or the light light. We can change the a spectrum of lights to fulfill the requirements of the growth and development of the plant. And also the scientific scientists also provide and design the different conditions of a light based on the growth needs of the plant. Although right now we cannot enjoy the natural lights, but I believe with the development of science and technology, maybe in the near future, we can use the natural light to cultivate the plant. I believe that you could provide an answer to this question. I believe the answer may be from you. Maybe another question from Henan.
To the Taekwonauts, I'm a Fuxian from Luoyang Province. I would like to know the mechanic clock and also atom clock. So work the same in Earth and in space, and see a microgravity effect anything in space. That's another very interesting question. Let me take this question. For you could see that the a electronic watch uh, operates smoothly and normally. When you talk about that mechanical watch that still operates, it depends on what type. So we could see that if that's the a uh, use the a uh, pendulum, then that cannot work because that's rely on the a uh, gravity. So that could not work. But to give you a the a spoiler that later on we will install a cold atom watch later on will also arrive in the core module with Meng Tian lab module uh, previously actually we had that the a, a cold atom clock that also provides the extreme accuracy of timing and also this time we also used improved a, a cloud atom clock. So with also with a lot of anticipation, so that will provide ultra high provision of timing. So let's turn to Yunnan. Any questions? Hello, this is Sui Takonats. I'm from Xiaguan Middle School. My name is Zhang Beixi. My question is, in space station, can you feel that turbulence? And also, can you see the other The uh, satellites. So maybe I let me take your question. So when you take vehicles, the trains or cars or airplanes, of course there is the a turbulence, right? But in space, there's no uh, gravity, and there's also no the uh, airflow. And also in addition, we have a CMG installed. So it could provide a very stable environment for us, so we cannot really feel the uh, turbulence. So talk about other... The a uh, space vehicle. So for the different space vehicle or spacecraft, they have a different designated orbit. So it's very hard to just rely on the a uh, bear eyes to observe the other vehicles. But we know actually in ISS, we also have colleagues working there and we explore the universe and try to benefit the human beings with our hard work. So maybe another question from Yunnan. My name is Chen Shu Han from Dali. So, how many colors can you see about Earth from the a space and what is the most beautiful color? All right, let me take your question. I really like your question. We orbit the Earth in every 90 minutes. So from our angle, the a color of the planet actually is not in the fixed colors. So when the orbit in the sunny side, 
we could see a yellow, that's the soil color. We could see also the white color, that's the snow-capped mountain, and also could see the color of the desert, the color of the ocean. We also could see that it clouds as well. But when in the, the a sh shade part, we could see that the a light of the cities that highlighted the beauty of our planet. So you talk about the most beautiful color for myself. I like the a color. That sometimes that's in golden color. Some is in blue, or sometimes in purple. That's the atmospheric glow. That's very very beautiful. So I really like that air glow color. So that's our cameraman in space. He actually have taken a lot of beautiful pictures later on. He maybe also share with our students. Could be another question from Beijing. Good afternoon. I'm from Beijing. My question is, in April last year, I heard that we started the recruitment of the fourth batch of the Taekwonauts. So what should I do to become a qualified Taekwonaut? Thank you. I'm so glad to hear such a question. So I hope today, for the Tiangong class, it will inspire more young people to join the aerospace undertaken. As you said, China has already started the recruitment for the fourth batch of the um, Taekwonauts, and actually they will recruit from different disciplines, and also they will uh, also recruit some of the load experts from Macau and Hong Kong. And also we will recruit some of the engineer for the space station. And uh, you have to go through a lot of screening before you get qualified. Make sure you study hard and also do a lot of exercise. I believe in the near future, you will become one of us, and making sure that in the future you will also be able to step onto the space, and we are waiting for you in the space station. Your students, time flies, and that comes to the end for the Tiangong class. Thank you for three Taekwondo's for the excellent lecturing. So also, we would like to wish the crew of the Shenzhou 14 to complete the mission successfully. We are here waiting for you coming back in victory. Thank you. In October, we have spent this memorable time together, and soon Meng Tian lab module will be sent to the space soon, and also we will witness the great moment for the completion of the construction of the China Space Station. We hope in the future you could create a better future for our space home. For our strong nation gave us opportunity to realize our dream. I hope all of you to work hard and pursue your dreams, making sure that you do your best to realize the Chinese dream. It is quite fortunate for us to live in such a great era. We hope that our journey is the sea of stars. Let's work together to create a brighter future. Flying to the space is always our dream, and we never give up exploring science. So that is the Tiangong class. See you next time. Thank you again for the Taekwondo.
拜。再见。